In this exercise, we're going to cover one of the most crucial aspects of making interactive Canvas applications. We will demonstrate how to read or capture the user's mouse coordinates upon events that we specify. Okay, the first thing we're going to do after we get our CTX object reference here is we're going to add an event listener of on mouse move or mouse move depending on which way you add the event listener and we'll use the add event listener method so we'll go ctx.canvas dot add event listener open close parentheses semicolon the first parameter is the event that we want to listen for and this one is going to be mouse move so anytime the mouse moves at all over the canvas this event is going to fire off a function and all we have to do to put that function in place is put in comma and then the second parameter can be the function itself and we'll just put event here for the event reference if we need it within our function. Put in your opening curly brace and your closing curly brace. Now what you can do is just bring these down in between the opening and closing curly brace. You can bring those down a couple of lines and then bring them back here to proper indentation. So now we have an event listener of mouse move ready and any time the mouse moves on the canvas the code that we put within this function here is going to execute. So the first thing we'll type in is var mouse x because we want the mouse's x position. We're going to make that equal to the event dot client x. Now we're not done creating this value of mouse x but I want to show you what we get if we leave it just like this. So let's do the same thing for the mouse y mouse y is equal to event dot client y and what client y and client x return to you are the user's mouse coordinates in the window the whole page so what I'm gonna do is go down into the body and I'm just gonna add an h2 element this is just gonna be for testing purposes and I'm gonna give it an ID equal to status and by default I'll have just zero the bar symbol and then a zero on the other side this represents the x this represents the Y position of the mouse. So now what we can do is go up into the mouse move function and type in document dot get element by ID, the status element, and say dot inner HTML is equal to mouse X. Here actually let me take this status control X and I'll just make a new var for the status. It's equal to that element on the page. And then I'll just say status that inner HTML is equal to mouse X and then I'll concatenate to that string the mouse Y coordinates and then I'll add the bar symbol in between them and this is what's going to show up down in this status element down here anytime the mouse moves at all on the canvas so now we still have to adjust this value a little bit to create the proper mouse X and mouse Y but I want to show you what you get if you leave the values just like this basically you get the user's mouse position within the browser. Now the reason why if I go over point zero zero here or one one of the canvas if I'm at X position one and Y position one with my mouse the reason why I see 11 and 11 down there is because we haven't yet compensated for where the canvas lies on the page. So you have to subtract the offset left and the offset top properties of where the canvas lies on the web page which is very simple to do. So we say event.clientx, which returns to us where the user's mouse is in the X position on the whole page. So all we have to do is subtract from that the ctx.canvas.offset left. And to get the proper mouse coordinates for the Y plane as well, we just say ctx.canvas.offset top property. So offset left and offset top return to you how many pixels that the canvas is sitting offset from the left and where it's sitting on the page offset from the top. So you can just subtract those values from where the user's mouse position is on the page. Now if we refresh our canvas, let me go back to position 1 and 1. You see? Now I get the proper positioning for my mouse. And now all the time while my mouse is moving over the canvas, my program is reading the X position and the Y position for where the mouse is. If I go down to the very corner, you'll see that I get to 499 and 299. So if I move off of the canvas, the mouse move function stops. And you can also read the mouse coordinates in other event handlers. So we'll put a listener for the click event now. Just change mouse move to click. And we'll make this one an alert that just alerts the uh, mouse X and mouse Y. So we'll type in alert right here, press control S to save, 
And now refresh your application and as your mouse moves you still get the same functionality as before but now when you click it's going to return the exact X and Y coordinates of where the user's mouse is when they click so what you can do is when the user clicks you can draw a rectangle or a circle to that very spot let's say I have balloons floating up the page really fast and it's just a game where the user has to tap the screen to pop the balloon maybe if I'm making a game for smartphones and the balloons are floating up the screen and the user just has to tap I can make a little hit test which will be showing you how to program for hit test and object collisions and I'll also be showing you in later exercises how to sense if the user's mouse clicks on a certain asset that you have on the canvas so reading the user's mouse coordinates is a very crucial important part of making interactive applications on the canvas or on a web page in general you don't have to actually be moving over the canvas to read a user's mouse coordinates on the web page. So you can do this kind of mouse reading, mouse coordinate reading, even outside of Canvas applications. On a regular web page, you just put the mouse move event over the document body or the window itself. Alright, so the most important thing about the code here is that we just have to remember that we subtract the offset left and offset top from the client X and client Y positions of the mouse on the web page. That way no matter where the canvas is on the web page you'll get proper mouse coordinates relative to the canvas itself. Just comment out this alert and we'll do a fill rect anywhere that the user's mouse coordinates are. So we'll say ctx dot fill style is equal to orange and ctx dot fill rect mouse x and the second parameter mouse y and then the size that we want it to be. And we'll just make it 30 pixels by 30 pixels. If we refresh and we click down on our canvas now, we get an orange rectangle drawn every time we click at the exact coordinates that we specify. Now what if you want that little orange rectangle to be drawn when the user clicks and you want the very center of the rectangle to be at the center of their mouse. So we'll take mouse Y and minus half the width or half the height rather and take mouse X and minus half the width of the size of the object itself. Now when we refresh and we click our mouse we should get the square show up centered on the mouse. See? So right when I'm clicking now little squares are showing up anywhere where I click and dead center. Okay so that shows you all about how to access the user mouse coordinates on the canvas and apply those values to certain aspects of your interactive canvas applications.